Hi, this is Lisa, and we're back with the Ask Lisa. We've gotten a few, few questions to the office uh, in the past week or so, inquiring about this recess appointment. Um, these are these are questions regarding the appointment of Donald Berwick to head the agency that oversees Medicare and Medicaid. It's kind of uh, an interesting uh, issue. Uh, for those that are not aware of what a recess appointment is, the president has the ability to appoint individuals um, to agency positions while the Senate is in recess, and it, um, it does not then require that the Senate come back and confirm that individual. That person will be in that office for the balance of, of that Congress without confirmation by the Senate. So the situation with Donald Berwick was, was interesting. Uh, this is the individual that was uh, nominated by the president to, to take over um, uh, CMS, which has the oversight of Medicare, Medicaid. Pretty important divisions. Uh, pretty important in terms of the scope of the budget. $803 billion budget that Mr. Berwick would have the oversight of. There was not even a committee hearing on this individual. I serve on the Health, Education, Labor, Pensions Committee, the committee that would have the ability to call him in, ask him questions about how he is going to administer the, these new um, uh, Medicare provisions, this new health care bill. Didn't even schedule a hearing in the health committee so that we could ask these questions. And instead, uh, no member of the Senate, no member of the Senate had an opportunity to, to ask a question, to inquire as to, to how this gentleman was going to, to be leading. Uh, instead, the administration, through a recess appointment, appointed an individual, again, that has an oversight of a budget that's uh, over $800 billion, um, a budget that is the size of um, there's only 15 other countries in the world, let's put it that way, that have a budget that is larger than this. And no opportunity to vote on them, on him in committee or uh, on the floor. This is, this is clearly not uh, the way that you run an open and transparent uh, process. So uh, this was an issue that generated a great deal of controversy and um, a real disappointment on my part. The other question that we got um, that we've received a lot of inquiries on. Uh, this is about the, the upcoming Senate confirmation vote on the Supreme Court nominee, Elena Kagan. Uh, shortly after the Judiciary Committee concluded its hearings um, uh, asking questions of Solicitor General Kagan, um, uh, I stated my opposition to the confirmation uh, of her as a Supreme Court Justice. It was based on uh, so much of what I heard uh, revealed through the Judiciary Committee, uh, an assessment of uh, positions that she has taken previously. I had opposed um, Elena Kagan when she was nominated to be Solicitor General because I did not feel that she had the experience. The Solicitor General basically is the attorney in charge of the attorneys. Um, uh, back here, and, and, and she had no trial experience. She really had not practiced law. She is an academic. She is the dean, um, clearly uh, educated in that area, um, presented herself very well, quite honestly, in the Judiciary Committee hearings. But some of the things that caused me concern and which prompted my, my statement of opposition, uh, in Alaska, Second Amendment, as we know, is, is, is so important to, to so many of us. And to, to hear her state that um, she really did not have an understanding as to the history of the Second Amendment, that caused me real concern. Um, as an academic, I would expect that she would have that. And she stated that, in fact, she did not. So Second Amendment issues were, were important to me. Um, also the fact that, again, she had not been a judge, and that is not necessarily a criteria. Uh, in order to serve on the Supreme Court. But you do expect that there be that level of, of experience. 
Um, and again, I was concerned about, uh, about the experience that, uh, that she has. Um, she has been a, a political advocate uh, of sorts when she was with the, the Clinton White House. It concerns me that we ask those in the judicial branch, certainly in the highest uh, court in, in the land, to ensure that, that, that politics is, is, is clearly not at issue. And I question whether or not she would be able to remove that political advocacy hat that she has worn uh, and don that of, of being a, a true and fair arbiter uh, of the law. So for a, a multitude of different reasons, uh, I have stated my opposition. The Senate will likely take up the confirmation of Elena Kagan the first week in August, just prior to uh, our August recess. So you should be watching for that. I want to thank you for, for submitting your, your questions, your concerns, um, and, and thank you again for this segment of Ask Lisa.